Now we're going to talk about 5G antenna. So the smart antenna, how smart it is and how can we model it in the software very easily. So um, before we talk about antennas, we need to talk about beams and the type of beams in 5G. I'm not going to talk too much. I'm, we're going to make this practical and focus on the important aspects in planning when you do planning the software. So um, in, in the next radio, um, uh, there are three type of beams, basically. Uh, we've got the broadcast beam, control beam, and traffic beam. So the, the broadcast is used for the uh, PB, PBCH, the physical broadcast channel, and the, the uh, uh, secondary synchronizations. Uh, uh, and this is a static type of beam. So static means they are predefined positions and they just repeat in that order. Okay, so you've got three types of beams, broadcast, control, and channel. Now, what is a beam? What is a beam? I mean, it, it, how can we model the beam in the software? What is a beam? A beam is nothing but a synthesized antenna radiation pattern. Which means you can go ahead and ask the vendor, give me antenna radiation pattern for these beams based on your configuration. And they supply you in MSI format or planet format or, or, or PLM format, so or ADF format, or maybe CSV format. So now the good thing about that beam is it can be steered, resulting in pattern sweeping. This is electronic sweeping. So it's on the move, like, like here what you see on the right hand side, it's on the move. But how can we do how can we manage something on the move where the software is gonna be static? So We'll show you how, how we overcome this problem. So for now, beam is, is just an antenna pattern, which you can model. So which, uh, which beam is most important for coverage, 5G coverage? I'm talking about coverage, I'm not talking about throughput or other aspects. So in coverage, a broadcast beam is the most important. So why broadcast beam is so important for our planning? Because broadcast beam is used for the user, user equipment initial access procedure. It's used to transmit the SS block, the SSB, which carries the, the PSS, which is primary synchronization signal, a secondary synchronization signals, and the PBCH. All these all this channels, all, all this uh, uh, information are very, very important when you access the network, when you want to connect to the network, when you want to search the network, you want to benchmark different networks when you want to do handover. So even in the idle mode, so idle mode when it's not in the connection mode, idle mode, the measurement is based on the SSS. The SSS is on the on the broadcast beam, and also as we as we'll find out later on, SS is also transmitting the SSRSRP, which will be used to do coverage uh, uh, um, assessment or coverage uh, estimate. So the, the, also the UE transmits the PRASH. PRASH is the first step in talking to the base station. So if there's no broadcast beam, there's no PRASH. You can't approach the base station on the uplink. So PRASH is the physical uh, is the physical random access channel, which is the, the, the procedure to access the network with first step. So all this is dependent on the SSB. How do you predict the coverage? So first, you establish the broadcast beam, and they might give you individual beams. If they give you individual beams, you have to, you have to combine them. And then we have to capture the antenna beam, the beam, the beam gain for the, for the SSB, and we have to calculate the coverage and then do the SSRSRP analysis. I'm going to run you a very quick comparison between 4G and 5G in terms of the beam. 4G has one wide or one fat broadcast beam, okay, which is also used for traffic and everything else. So I'm talking about the early release, release 9, for example. Uh, you can see here uh, we've got 17 dpi and uh, antenna gain. So, so in 4G, you've got less ports, less antennas, and you have a, a, a fat. Uh, pattern and that pattern has delivering for example 17 dpi now when you look at the 5g at the bottom it has a lot narrower it's a lot if you've got more antennas but it's narrower and it's delivering however 21.5 dpi so um it is delivering better um uh, better range but that range is mainly to 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 solve the problem of a frequency because the frequency in its high frequencies uh, six, six gigahertz above then you lose a lot of uh, power there's a lot of advantages of using narrow beams. We talk about it later on, but you see, this is a coverage prediction, very quick one between 4G and 5G, and you find that 4G is not doing a good job at all. That's the trick. So they can actually sweep it. They can make it. Uh, uh, they can change the orientation of this. Um, it's electronically. You are electronically sweeping uh, this narrow uh, uh, beam, which is 21.5 dpi consistent, and it, not exactly consistent. You would say uh, the edge is slightly less. But you can see when you sweep it, it's gonna give you a kind of the same pattern as, as the LTE. LTE is 65 uh, uh, degrees beam width. This is, for example, now it's 65. Individual ones are only 10. So each one of these is transmitting uh, a different 
uh, SSB. Okay, SSB zero, SSB one, depending on the configuration of the antenna. So, so this is this is guy is showing you um, what, how 5G solved the problem of um, um, fulfilling the coverage while while maintaining the range that it needs by sweeping the antenna pattern. And that sweeping is is uh, uh, running uh, uh, in a certain sequence and in a certain uh, uh, schedule. And usually it's a bursty, so it's it's, it's about five milliseconds. It's five millisecond. Uh, the, the base station spend five milliseconds on on each beam. So here we have an example: uh, eight beams. So this is sixty four by sixty four antenna, and it's programmed to deliver eight beams on the SSB. So let's look first at the first spot. So second beam, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You see, that's what's happening. It's a swinging. It's a sweeping. So depending what a customer is, the customer will pick up the the best beam. And then it will time time when it's the next time it's going to arrive in my spot. So the communication would be uh, based on that uh, spot, on that timing. And now um, in the software, I don't have to model it as an individual beam. In the software, all you have to do is you have to combine them into this, or every single beam into one broad beam. And then we use this in the modeling because you know for sure when you do coverage predictions at, uh, at the 40 degrees, you know for sure that well, eventually that spot will, will reach that coverage and the customers here will receive that beam. And that combination might be done by your vendor or it can be done in our software. So how do you manage electrical and mechanical tilt in the software? So um, this is very important. You still have electrical tilt guys in 5G and you need to be careful with it. Uh, electrical tilt, you can manage it and, uh, uh, in the tool. How do we do this? We do this by requesting from the vendor the different radiation patterns at the different tilt values. And then we chuck these antenna patterns in, the, in our database, and then we, we, we point to it in the, in the importation process. And then the software will attach the right antenna pattern, which is embedding the tilt, to the right sector, to the right antenna. You can see here, there's a, uh, this is the red, and this is here uh, antenna, well, it's not exactly called red in, in 5G, but you can see 00112233, so we can import this information. It's, it's uh, in the antenna pattern, and you can import it in batch. So if you have 100 sites, no problem, thousand sites, no problem. You can automate the, the process and then you can get it done in a matter of minutes. Um, so electrical tilt, uh, the individual patterns need, need to be supplied by the vendor and the mechanical tilt can be taken care of by the user directly. So you see this is, has, uh, as a tilt is zero, there's no mechanical is zero. Now, and you can see the antenna pattern is already tilted down by roughly two degrees or two degrees and a half. It's already tilted down. Now you can add on the top of this a mechanical tilt, Five, deb five degrees. This is further the down tilting. So guys, I want you to be careful with down tilting, uh, with mechanical tilting and electrical tilting. They're not the same. So you need to manage, the, manage them properly, as I showed you. So 5G numerology, this is, uh, um, some customers are already familiar with it. Um, and when, you, when, you, when you add a station on the map or with the input station, you can actually uh, um, um, use the built-in calculator to do the resource, resource uh, uh, assignment or to do resource ca uh, calculations. So this is uh, uh, completely automated. So nothing too much to think about here. So all you have to do, put the right bandwidth for your 5G station, put the right bandwidth, and then choose the right numerology. And when you choose the right one, the software will automatically establish how many RBs, how many resource blocks are in this uh, configuration, and how many subcarriers there is. And it will also calculate for you the, the reference signal percentage, which you need it for the SRP analysis. And, uh, and the PDSCH, the, the traffic channel. So it's in the, in the G B tab here for the base station. So um, you, all you have to do, for example, if you put here 50 megs, and then you go and choose a 15 kilohertz, for example, configuration, you see you need, to you need 270, 270 RBs, and that's the reference uh, uh, percentage, reference signal in the whole, in the whole um, channel. Uh, if you had to switch to, to 30 degrees, to 30 kilohertz, which is numerology number one, you see the values are changing. So, so it makes your life a lot easier. So if, if you want to go with 60 and one, here we go, it will calculate for you. So this is uh, automatic calculations. So link budget calculator, also we updated this, uh, 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 previously it was 4G, today is 4G and 5G. So we also updated this uh, calculator to introduce different strategies. So today we, we can uh, do link budget balancing uh, and we can consider the numerology order for 5G, and we can also uh, apply different strategies. So this is an automatic link budget calculator. You put the parameters in, and then you put uh, uh, the throughput you need, and the software will reverse engineer 
uh, and then tell you what is the SNR, what is the, the throughput, what is the, 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 the planning targets, the RSRP you need in order to fulfill these requirements. And you also have these different strategies. So the strategies we have, user defined RB, which means you are in charge. You dictate to the software how many resource blocks you're going to use. Uh, and then the software will, will translate your throughput that you need. So your input is throughput and RBs, number of RBs, and the software will work out for you what's the minimum signal to noise ratio you need in order to fulfill your requirements. And the signal to noise ratio is the one used in order to calculate the, the, the minimum RSRP you need in your planning. It, it does uplink, downlink, balancing, balancement, and so on. First, we dictate the throughput and the tool computes minimum SNR, then the minimum RB. So first we establish what is the minimum SNR we need, and then we establish how many RBs we can, we can fulfill this. The last one, it will we use the entire RBs to do the dimensioning. Also have this SNR versus throughput. That's a very interesting function, uh, um, which does the, the translation between signal to noise ratio and throughput. This is adopted by 3GPP. The 3GPP approach is based on, it's based on the um, Shannon's, Shannon theory. So this is the gray one, is the Shannon bound. That's the theoretical, theoretical limit or what you need to be using, practical. So estimated reality is so what we do, we have some sort of fudge factors. It's a fudge factors along the way for different, for different signal to noise ratio, we apply corrections. So we apply corrections in different spots along the way. That correction is called the scaling factor, Shannon scaling factor. So you see it's a polynomial. So that polynomial multiplied by this theoretical line, which is an equation effectively, if you multiply these two, you get the effective throughput or you get the, the effective relationship between signal to noise ratio and throughput. So this is an excellent way in order to, to have one equation to solve the, the, the problem of uh, estimating throughput or estimating a SNR. And that's what we did in the software here. So these different uh, uh, attenuations that we need to apply, and correction terms are applied, are applied here in the software. But you don't have to complicate yourself. You just need to select the technology you're working with and the software will extract from, from the database the correct uh, attenuation or correct fudge factors in order to correct it, correctly estimate. And one thing here I should notice, uh, I should note you, we introduce layers. Layers, we're talking about multiple spatial layers. This means that you can double the throughput or triple the throughput because you have multiple spatial layers in your link or in your, your, your antenna. So if you put it to auto, the software will pick up the value from the base station so that uh, you can set up the layer, how many layers per station, depending on the antenna capability. Uh, the bottom line is, this is a, a, a function, a built-in function in the software that will take care of translation, translating uh, your signal to noise ratio into a throughput and vice versa. So um, let's have a look here. So SSRSRP, what does it mean, SSRSRP? So in, in, in 4G, guys, we only had RSRP. The one I'm really, I'm really concerned about uh, uh, in, our, in my modeling is the SSRSRP, which is the, the, the secondary synchronization reference signal received power. Now, this uh, uh, SSRSRP is carried by the SSS, which is the secondary synchronization signal. This is the middle 20 RBs, 20 RBs in the middle of the channel. Okay, this, this is the, the, where the broadcast is happening. And as you know, guys, I mean, 5G can be 100 megs. So it, it's not really uh, straightforward for the, for the UE to scan, to scan the entire channel or the entire band. The base station or the UE have to only scan the middle of the band. So the, it's the only valid way to compare signals, signal levels from individual cells and different operators. Okay, so if you want to do drive testing, you want to do validation, you want to do a, a comparison to different operators, you, you have to use, you have to use the SSRSRP. This SSRSRP is very important for cell selection, is to choose which side to camp into and for handover, to estimate the next station um, uh, coverage. So it can be measured by drive test tools and it doesn't require connection with the cell. So you don't need, for example, a, a, a SIM card or to be connected in a connected mode with the base station to measure SSRSRP. So this is some equations here to show you how you can derive reference signal. But, but what's interesting here is that the, uh, the SSB beam is important. So very important we establish the beam gain from the broadcast beam. And, and, and that's to be used to predict the RSRP coverage. So let me, let me show you uh, how that works. So this is a network I have on the map now. And then you go to coverage network analysis, RSRP. Uh, RS, uh, RS composite coverage, and then the software will show you um, the, the, the RSRP, will calculate the RSRP for you. 
So this is the RSRP, and you can see here in the bottom, uh, or you can see the legend here on the top. So we've got a MEG 110 dBm to, to make 70 dBm and above. So you can see the, the, the coverage range on the top on the map. So here I'll take this opportunity to show you quickly how do we run uh, coverage predictions in the software in a very, very uh, efficient way. So this computer now, I've got how many sites? I've got nearly, guys, 792 sites. I've got a lot of sites. Now let me show you how coverage predictions take care in, uh, in the latest release of software, how fast it is. So if you have like 1,000, 2,000 sites, you can really speed up the process considerably. So you just go to um, the, the, the database station, the database station, you select the, the station database you have for your 5G network, and then you run remote simulation. A remote simulation, I can do multi-core processing. So I can do eight sites, eight cells at the same time, calculate the coverage for eight sites concurrently in parallel fashion. So even I can, I can do 10, 12. So you see here, the software is recommending 12. So I, I'm gonna do eight, uh, uh, eight sites at, at once and run a simulation. And we are talking about uh, 5G and we're talking about uh, three uh, uh, high resolution data set. So high resolution is two meter step. So if you're doing this for two kilometers, if you do it one by one, it can take it two days or three days to do, to do a small network. But with the multi-core, you see what the software is doing. The software is automatically opening multiple sessions automatically. This is guys a state of the art and I'll show you um, how, how fast it is. It's going to run uh, cover here, you guys started. So you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight sessions running concurrently and the software is calculating the coverage like thunderstorm. So you can see how fast it is running. So I, I, I bet guys, this is gonna finish the network in a matter of four minutes or five minutes, even if it's 700 something, and even if it is high resolution and, and the two kilometer radius. So once it's done, the software will put the coverage in one place. Let me show you the CPU guys. So that's what the CPU is doing now. You see, it's still the CPU is relaxed. The problem is capping around 30%, but it's still relaxed, which means I can still run more threads. I just capped it to eight, but you could run actually more, depending how many licenses you have and depending on your computer memory and, uh, and how many uh, applications you have open at that time. So I'm gonna keep this running guys in the background. Uh, we'll come back to it maybe later on. But now you understand uh, uh, how, how it's possible to speed up coverage predictions when we talk about carrier grade network with, with lots and lots of sites.